Do you feel like painting some basketball lines on your driveway? I do. Let's see what happens. Hey everyone, welcome to Mather PE. Today I'm going to attempt to paint basketball key on my driveway here for the kids. I recently bought a hoop uh, from Costco, installed it yesterday, uh, and so now it's time to set up the area and prep for what we're going to try to do. We'll see how this goes. So before you start any project, you should prep the area. Uh, and it's suggested that you power wash or seal your driveway. And I just happened to have sealed my driveway last week. Uh, so I'm not going to do that part. But before I do any of the painting, I'm definitely going to brush it off. Uh, make sure there's no particles that are underneath my area to paint. So now I'm ready to start my measuring and my marking. Uh, you want to have a good diagram with all of the exact measurements that you want. Uh, and there's a variety of different ones depending on if you want high school or NCAA or men's or women's or NBA or whatever size court you want. Uh, so make sure you have a good diagram with you. So now that my area is all prepped and ready to go, even though it's a portable hoop, I want to make sure it's in the exact spot that I typically want it to be because I want to align the court up aesthetically with the house uh, so I don't have a crooked court. Now I really lucked out because on the garage, the left side and the right side where the brick is is exactly 12 feet, uh, which is actually the width of a basketball key. So I saved myself a step luckily. You might not be as lucky as I was with it. Now I'm not going to include a baseline on my court because my baseline is actually going to be the lip here where the garage is. Uh, and so as long as I am four feet out to the back of the backboard, that's the correct measurement. Here's everything that I used today for this project. I had an X-Acto knife, a tape measure, a chalk line, a square, two rolls of painter's tape, metallic sharpies, a drill with a drill bit, a big piece of 2x4, a roller, and paint. That's all I needed to get this job done today. And the first lines I'm going to draw are the sides of the key and it's going to run from the corner of the brick there and it's going to run out 19 feet in this direction. So in order to draw my line I'm going to actually use chalk uh, and so I went to Canadian Tire and I bought this uh, $10 chalk line reel. Uh, I needed one anyway for a couple other things so I'm going to add it to my tool kit. Uh, but anyhow I'm going to basically snap it down here and have a line that is 19 plus feet in a straight line and go from there. So I set up my chalk line here. It's measuring out about 20 feet, so it's got plenty of space. I'm just going to hold it down. And we should have a nice straight line. It's nice if you have two people doing this because one person can hold down one end of the chalk line. But I just taped mine down and, and it worked okay. Now that I've got a line down, I'm going to tape off the outside edge of it just so I know which line it is and that it's already been done. So I'm feeling good now that the first line is done and at least it's not an awful mess. Now I gotta do the same thing to the other side. So I've done both sides now. While I was at it, I did the foul line as well. Two things that came in handy. One was having a square. Uh, that way you can make sure your angles are tight. Uh, and also using that chalk line made a world of difference. I highly recommend that. So my outside lines are now taped uh, and I've now chalk lined the inside of the line as well because each line needs to be two inches thick uh, and I'm just gonna tape that off as well and uh, we'll see how that turns out. So part one is now done. I've got the basis for my key already set two inch wide line. You can get a tape machine done that will actually lay out two rolls of tape for you, one chalk line, but those things cost a lot of money and for a DIY project, you're probably not gonna do that. Chalk lines work excellent, just do your measurements. So now it's time to start doing our circle. If our key is 12 feet wide, I placed a mark with chalk six feet right at the top of the free throw line. So I had a spare piece of two by four. This is uh, like an eight foot length or maybe 10 foot length. Anyhow, in one spot, I drilled a little hole and I'm gonna stick a screw in there. And then down here, I made two bigger holes so that I can slide this carpenter's pencil inside and actually use it to, as a compass to draw with. I also decided it might be good 
I drilled a tiny little hole in the pavement actually so I could put the screw in and then use that as my base for my compass and then I'll just tire that up later when I'm done. So I have just a wood screw in here that's kind of just in the groove that I drilled in the driveway and then down here I've got my two holes. And these happen to be two inches apart so when I trace one line I'll just move the pencil out to the other one and then I should have hopefully a semicircle or a full circle that will match up appropriately. So we just had a major moment of success. There is truth to the measure twice, mark once philosophy. So using the jig or this compass, we were able to trace out two lines that are exactly two inches apart. And so now I just need to tape around those edges. So it's coming along nicely now. You'll notice that uh, I used a metallic Sharpie instead of the carpenter's pencil because the carpenter's pencil kept on breaking on me. So I think the tape job is now complete. Uh, the semicircle turned out excellent. I also did the boxes on the side. Uh, so I made sure the measurements were good. So it was four feet from the backboard to the first one. And then three, and then three. Uh, and I think we're good. Let's go up onto the roof and take a look from overhead and we'll see if it's all good before we start painting. So we're up on the roof, about 30 feet up. Inch my way to the top. And take a look down. Uh, it looks pretty spot on. I think we're ready to go. So everything looked really good from up above, so I'm going to sweep uh, the area where I'm going to paint and then we're going to get painting and finish this job up. So now that I've swept everything, I'm going to come around to each spot here and with a pen knife or an exacto knife, I'm just going to cut out this strip here uh, so that way the box has continuous paint. Now I'll need to do the same thing here in any part where there's supposed to be a continuous line. You can use a pen knife, might be a little bit more precise if you want. And the last couple things before I paint, I'm going to make sure I go around and smooth down all of my tape. Because it's a slightly uneven surface, you don't want to have paint seeping underneath and then you have an uneven line. Uh, and the other thing that I'm going to make sure I do is not put on the paint too thick and for the exact same reason. So it wouldn't be a project if there weren't some hiccups and this is the first one that I had today. The tape that I would originally used is only an inch wide and when I tried to start rolling, I ran into an issue where the roller was just almost too wide and it was going to make it tedious. So. I'm going to add another strip of painter's tape just down the inside just so there's a little less chance of me making a mistake. So you can see how wide my roller line was and I'm awfully glad I added that extra strip because it's making this job much quicker. So later on in this video the kids are going to come home and I'm going to try to capture the big reveal. Stick around and check it out. So there it is. Job done. Looks way better than I even anticipated it, and it's a win-win. I love basketball and I love my kids. You can do this too. Good luck. So I'm more than pleased with the results. Like any painting project, it's like 90% prep work and 10% paint, but if you prep properly, it can turn out great. So the kids are on their way home now, so it's time for the big reveal. I'm pretty pumped to see what they...